presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Arizona. Well, the stars are out again tonight in Los Angeles. We're at Dodger Stadium where the D-backs will look for their sixth win this year against L.A. and can still win their first series here in more than three years. The road trip continues from Hollywood. It's D-backs baseball on Fox Sports Arizona. Good evening from Dodger Stadium. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume and Bob Brenly along the way. It's the D-backs and the Dodgers, the second of a three-game series. Your pitching matchup tonight, Ross Tripling on the mound for Los Angeles. And for the Diamondbacks, it's Shelby Miller. Bob, his second start since his return from the minor leagues. Yeah, and it could easily be argued that he pitched much better than his numbers indicate against the Giants. He gave up six hits in six innings, but three of those came in the first inning when his only walk was issued. After that, he scattered three hits, was down in the zone, except when he wanted to elevate, really pitched well after that first inning in San Francisco. Yeah, the numbers you really like from that start last week for Shelby, one walk, 90 seven pitches 67 for strikes hopefully he can be that efficient again here tonight well the Diamondbacks now that we're in September have expanded their rosters and to say a little bit would be an understatement seven new guys called up today now you can just hear that dugout bench now scoot over reinforcements on the way Chris Herman is back from his hamstring injury Mitch Hanniger Peter O'Brien back from uh, Reno Andrew Chafin is healthy again Dominic Leone back uh, Matt Cook the pitcher has done well over the last month or so with the aces and the left hand reliever Steve Hathaway as well we are set to go here from Dodger Stadium it's the D-backs and the Dodgers Shelby Miller against Ross Tripling first pitches coming up on Fox Sports Arizona Arizona Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by CenturyLink. Switch to Century.
Sports Arizona is brought to you by Lone Butte Casino. Get in on big wins. By Chaz Roberts, air conditioning and plumbing. Choose Chaz. By Law Tigers, Arizona's motorcycle lawyers. And by Gigablast, 100 times more powerful internet from Cox. Bring on tomorrow. Well, these L.A. Dodgers feeling pretty good about themselves right now. They're a season high, 17 games over 500, four games atop the NL West. It's time to bring these guys back down to earth. Shelby Miller gets the baseball next. Cool evening here at Dodger Stadium, 69 degrees. Steve Berthew, Bob Brindley, and Tom Walsh along the way. It's the D-backs and the Dodgers, the second of a three-game set, and it's a crowded dugout down there for the boys in gray and Sedona red with the touch of teal tonight. Now a 33-man roster after a long series of moves today. Scoot over. <laughs> Bill Nevin in the house, the manager of the Reno Aces, joining with some of his players. Here's how Chip Hale will line them up tonight. Gene Segura at second base. Chris Owings at shortstop, A.J. Pollock out in center field, Paul Goldschmidt at first base, Jake Lamb, the only lefty in the lineup at third base, Wellington Castillo doing the catching, Yasmani Tomas in right field with Brandon Drury in left, and Shelby Miller, the right-hander on the mound. We're just about done with our pregame festivities, and 26-year-old rookie right-hander Ross Stripling is set to begin his warm-ups. He is your Arizona forward starting pitcher for the Dodgers. He's got promise and he's put himself on the L.A. radar this year. He's been up and down from the minor leagues. He's been in and out of the rotation of the bullpen, filling in for some injured Dodgers starters, just like he's doing tonight, while L.A. is without Clayton Kershaw and without Scott Kazmir, both of whom will be back soon. But, Bob, they really like what they've seen from this guy so far this year. Yeah, he's a, he's a pitcher. He doesn't rely on overpowering stuff. None of his uh, pitches would grade out as above average, but he knows how to use them. He keeps the ball down and out of the middle of the plate, and uh, you can see why the Dodgers like this right-hander. Yeah, his second major league start came right here at Dodger Stadium against the Diamondbacks back in the middle of April, and he pitched pretty well that day. Let's take a look at the defense around him. Our eye on defense for the Dodgers is brought to you by Nationwide Vision Center. Andrew Tolles getting a start in left field tonight. Jock Peterson with a home run in the game last night. He's in center. Josh Reddick did not hit a home run in the game last night. He'll be over in right field. Justin Turner, Corey Seager on the left side of the infield. Chase Utley and Adrian Gonzalez on the right side. That was Monte Grandal behind the plate for right-hander Ross Stripling. 
D-backs only 15 and 36 against the Dodgers since the start of the 2014 season. Doug Eddings will be behind the plate tonight. He'll have the balls and strikes. Stu Sherwater at first base. The crew chief Jeff Nelson is our second base umpire. And Laz Diaz at third. Time to reverse the troubling trend in this rivalry. It's been a little too lopsided lately. Yeah, it really has been. And unfortunately, a lot of those games haven't been that competitive. The Dodgers have taken an early lead and just kind of cruised to the finish line in many of the games, especially here at Dodger Stadium. Well, we'll see what they can do with Ross Stripling, the rookie tonight, as Gene Segura leads it off. There's strike one. We're underway. Segura third in the National League and hitting at 320. He leads the league in hits by four over Dodgers shortstop Corey Seager. Ross Stripling out of South Lake, Texas, a fifth round pick by the Dodgers out of Texas A&M in the draft four years ago. He's an Aggie. Segura ahead, two balls and one strike. Now you'll see that combination. We've already seen it here. Three pitches into the ball game. The high four seam fastball followed by the big over the top curve with that 12 to 6 break. Really, one pitch complements the other well. Now stripling that second big league start against the Diamondbacks here. April 14th, six innings. He gave up only two runs on five hits, but wound up with a no decision. Dodgers won that ball game 5-2. And the Diamondbacks also saw Stripling here at Dodger Stadium July 31st in a game that may uh, jog your memory a bit. That was a very unusual circumstance. Bud Norris was the L.A. starter, and he had to leave the game after facing only two batters with an injury. So Stripling came running in from the bullpen with one out in the top of the first inning and pitched three and two-thirds. That's the kind of year it's been for him. Full count on Segura to lead us off. You know, two appearances, as you mentioned, against the Diamondbacks this year. Not a decision yet. His ERA against the D-backs sits at 3.72 in his two appearances this year. The Red Hot Chris Owings in the two-hole tonight. He's on deck. In the air, deep center field. Jock Peterson's out there drifting near the wall. And he runs it down. Not much wind out there right now. The flags in center field around the Death Star speaker are pretty quiet right now. There it is. <laughs> you know, the bad thing is it obscures the sign behind it that used to be kind of a trademark here at Dodger Stadium. You can kind of see through the Death Star. And yeah, the 76 sign. Chris Owings, 10 hits in his last 15 at bats. Smoking hot right now. He's up to 290 on the year with two homers. Jumps on that first high fastball he sees from Stripling. Chris Owings, for me, is a really good high ball hitter. This could be a good matchup for him if Stripling leaves some of those fastballs at the top of the strike zone. Chris had two hits last night, including a double and an RBI. And he's now put together four consecutive multi-hit games after that big weekend at Coors Field against the Rockies. Chops one to third base for Turner. Two outs. Fielder number 11, A.J. Pollock. Here's A.J. 0 for 4 last night. That snapped a string of hits in five straight games, with at least one at bat. 281 with a homer in nine games this year. Three first pitch strikes from Ross Dripling to start us off.
Ross Stripling winless in his last four starts after he beat the Red Sox here at Dodger Stadium with five scoreless innings. That was August 6th. He hasn't pitched all that badly to say the least. It's just that the Dodgers have given him no run support. He's kind of been that guy lately. In fact, literally zero runs scored in each of his last two starts. Ahead of A.J. Pollock going two. Oh, right through the Fry Nacho helmet. She made a nice catch. The ball actually stayed in the helmet. The chips went everywhere, but the ball stayed in the helmet. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> Two and two. Well, Stripling has so much downward movement on that curveball. You really have to make sure you see that pitch up. One that starts up above the letters will end up right in the middle of the strike zone. If it strike starts in the strike zone, it's probably going to end up in the dirt. Second full count of the top of the first for Stripling. Goldie would be next. AJ launches one and that's going to go. Say goodbye AJ Pollock his second and it's one nothing D backs. Shelby Miller to at least a one run lead here in the first inning of this ball game. Well, that's just a cut fastball that doesn't do much of anything. Flutters up there on the inside part of the plate, up in the zone a little bit. And AJ puts a nice swing on it. That had that Goldie sound. Sure did, didn't it? That sounds pretty. Here is Goldie. Has not skipped a beat. A jumbo jack off the bat of AJ Pollock. A free jumbo jack tomorrow. The purchase of a large drink from our friends at Jack in the Box. You'd never ever guess that that's a guy that sat out five months. That's what was so amazing about his rehab assignment. Everywhere he went, he hit and hit for power, stole bases. I mean, he just hit the ground running. Usually, a guy on a rehab assignment, it. Takes a better part of a week or two to get back up to speed with the game. Took him two games. Yeah. Goalie hitting 296. He's got 20 home runs. 0 for 3 with a walk last night. He struck out twice. Goldie only three for 22 on this road trip. He's been a little quiet lately. Wow. The third 3 2 count in this inning for Ross Dripling, who's now over 20 pitches. Well, your pass is here. <laughs> you can hear him, can't you? <laughs> There's a guy right down below our booth that's trying to rally the troops here at Dodger Stadium no, here in the top down, of the first. <laughs> Very enthusiastic. Yeah, naturally just stopped. He's right below us. <laughs> I don't want him bothering Vin. That's the only thing. That can't happen. Two Stripling gets the strikeout, but Pollock gets the homer. Shelby Miller coming up with a one nothing lead.
AJ Pollock's second home run this year is giving the Diamondbacks the early lead. And your Arizona Ford starter for the D-backs is Shelby Miller. His second start following his recall from AAA Reno. He got the loss Wednesday afternoon at San Francisco. However, with the exception of a rusty first inning, he pitched extremely well. He was in attack mode all the way. That's how Chip Hale put it. A very big step forward for Shelby, and he's hoping to continue that clear progress here tonight. Yeah, that game against the Giants gave up an infield single to Joe Panic, a well-struck double off the bat of Buster Posey, and then a cue shot off the bat of Hunter Pence, walked Brandon Belt, and otherwise he was on top of his game against the Giants. Dodgers with a four-game lead over the Giants atop the division. This is the lineup for Dave Roberts' ball club tonight. Chase Utley at second base, Corey Seager at short, Justin Turner at third, Adrian Gonzalez over at first base with Yasmani Grandal catching, Josh Reddick in right, Jock Peterson in center, Andrew Tolles in left, Ross Stripling on the mound, and you may have noticed all left-handed hitters with the exception of Justin Turner. Jake Lamb, the third baseman in the second base spot as the shift is on for Chase Utley, and there's strike one. Utley hitting 258. He's got 12 home runs. Seven of those homers have come since the All Star break. Utley last night had a couple of singles. He knocked in a run. He's hit safely in five straight. Off the mound, Lamb is there, backhand snap, spins and throws, and he got him. Nicely done by Jake Lamb. As Udley bounced it up the middle, but just near the end of that shift, and Lamb will go back over the third. Corey Seager. Time for your Valley Honda dealers. Keep it the game. I mentioned a lot of lefties in this Dodger lineup tonight. Only Justin Turner and the pitcher Ross Stripling hit from the right side. So for Shelby Miller, location, 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 and I'm not talking about real estate. If you're going in on the lefties, make sure you get it in there. If you're going away, make sure you put it where you want it. We saw what happened when you make mistakes in the heart of the plate to left-handed hitters in this Dodger lineup last night. Well, here's one of them, Corey Seager, who takes a strike. 316 now with 24 home runs. A triple shy of the cycle last night. Three hits and drove in three. Squirts it the other way. It drops in front of Drury, a one-out single. Our eye on defense for the D-backs, brought to you by Nationwide Vision Centers. Outfield will be Drury in left, Pollock in center, Tomas over in right field. Jake Lamb at third base, Chris Owings at short, Gene Segura at second base, Paul Goldschmidt over at first with Wellington Castillo behind the plate once again for right-hander Shelby Miller. So Seeger already with four hits in the series. He's at first for Justin Turner. Strike one from Shelby at 95. Turner 269. He is tops on the Dodgers with a career high 25 home runs. And his only hit last night was his part in the home run parade. He was one for four with a couple of strikeouts. That one gets behind Castillo and Seeger moves up. Slider down low and away that time. Wellington just a little slow to react. Ball is pulled over in that left-handed batter's box all the way to the backstop. Dodgers have at least four players this year with 20 or more homers, and Turner is leading the way with 25. One and two. I believe they've charged Wellington Castillo with a pass ball on that last one. 
I hate to pick on the catchers, but I think that's appropriate that time. Wellington knew that that ball was going to be breaking down and away from the right-handed hitter. He was just a little slow reacting. In the air, right center, Tomas can't get it on the dive. Here comes Seeger. He will score, and the game is tied. Castillo slow to react behind home plate and then Yasmani Tomas slow to react on that little floater in the gap in right center nice diving attempt at the end of the play but he just got a terrible jump on that ball. Adrian Gonzalez leads the Dodgers in RBIs 293 and 17 home runs he had one of their five homers last night. Probably easier to just tell you the Dodgers that didn't homer last <laughs> night. Right, it is. Utley, Reddick, and Kendrick in the starting lineup were the only three that didn't go deep. It was one of those nights. You don't see a lot of that. It'll be interesting to see how Shelby looks in this first inning. He admitted in his return last week against the Giants that he was kind of a little jittery out there in the first inning. Giants got three hits and a walk off Shelby in that first. They scored twice, but after that, once that was behind him, he basically shut him down for the next five innings. Left field for Drury. Turner will bluff and hold at first, and that's the second out. Catcher number nine, Yasmani Grandal. Shelby, once he settled in against the Giants, he looked really good from the second inning through the fifth. He retired 13 of the 15 he faced. And did most of it was just with soft contact. Well located fastballs through just enough off speed pitches to keep the Giants hitters off balance, but everything was down, in and out. A lot of easy ground balls and lazy fly balls. The dangerous switch hitting catcher, Yasmani Grandal. First time tonight, Shelby has not thrown a first pitch strike. There's the defensive alignment. They overload the right hand side. Grandal has homered now in three consecutive games. First time in his career he's done that. Those 24 homers already a career high. Goes Bunt, takes a strike, and it's one and one. Twenty-four home runs leads all major league catchers. Mentioned it in ball game last night. The Dodgers are not a running team. Howie Kendrick leads the Dodgers offense with nine stolen bases this season. If you just make those base runners stop, don't allow them to have a walking lead. You don't need to pay an inordinate amount of attention to any base runner. Just make him stop. Well, that should help Shelby get in some rhythm, even when he's pitching from the stretch. But he's behind on Grandal, three and one. Josh Reddick on deck.
three balls, two strikes, two outs. Goldie on the line, playing behind the runner Turner at first. He'll be off of the pitch. And there he goes. Rondahl hits one high in the air, right field near the line. Tomas drifting over there, and he's got it. But the Dodgers get the equalizer. It's 1-1 after one in Los Angeles. and the Dodgers. Greater coverage of baseball is brought to you by T-Mobile. A look around the rest of the National League West. Giants, they are now four back of these Dodgers for the NL West lead, and they are trailing at Colorado right now, 2-1. to one. Michael Brenly's Red Sox at Petco Park. No score so far against the Padres. Jake Lamb will lead off the second against Ross Dripling. D-backs. A solo homer by A.J. Pollock. Justin Turner, an RBI single, all the scoring so far. What's the beat the streak situation tonight? Uh, good one tonight. Trey Turner had me on the edge of my seat. He went 0 for his first three before doubling, so got my point for Trey Turner. I also played Anthony Rizzo, who homered in his first at hole. Up to 15. 15. Look out, people. <laughs> it's getting down to gut check time. You get up close to 20, that's when the nerves start to get a little jittery. Shift is on against Lamb. Dodgers do things differently. They take the third baseman, Justin Turner, right there and put him way out in right field. Diamondbacks always have Jake Lamb near the second base bag, which is something you'd think the Dodgers would do because Turner has played a fair amount of second base in his career. It's not like you're moving a third baseman over to some unfamiliar spot. But they have Utley near the second base back. 2 0 on Lamb. Jake's bat really coming around on this road trip. He homered in San Francisco and in Colorado. And last night had an RBI single and a walk. Hits it right into the shift, and sure enough, there's Turner. 5-3 on the put out. Now he has to run all the way back over to third base as Wellington Castillo yes, steps in. Wellington Castillo. I'm not sure why the Dodgers do that. Uh, I thought it might have something to do with the distance of the throw because Turner is playing out there in shallow right field. But if you look at where Chase Utley was positioned, it's just as long a throw from behind second base over to first as it is from shallow right field to first. I guess there's the idea that why have two guys quote unquote out of position when you can have only one leave Utley where he is and make Turner adjust. Hey! 
Wellington 0 for 4 last night. Chip Hale's ball club, only four hits against the Dodgers in the series opener. Up and in. One and two on Wellington Castillo. Dodgers rotation during spring training just decimated by injuries so. Ross Stripling broke camp in Glendale with the big league club. He had never pitched above double A ball. But suddenly he got the fifth starter's job and a spot on the opening day roster. Coming off Tommy John surgery just over two years ago. And he punches out Castillo his second strikeout. Stripling stuff is not off the charts good, but uh, when he's commanding all four of his pitches, uh, he can be very tough. With that fastball on both sides, up and down, that big over the top curveball struck out Wellington that time on a hard slider. Yes, Monty Tomas. He's got that front foot all padded up. And he takes ball one. He was kind of taking inventory out there in right field after diving for that little <laughs> ball that dropped in the gap in right center. Stretching his back and his shoulders. 0 for 4 last night after he hit it all three games at Colorado over the weekend. One and one. Stripling this season has thrown between time in the minors and his first look at the big leagues 102 innings. He threw only 71 last year after he had Tommy John surgery in April of 2014. So he is on an innings limit this year. The Dodgers though won't say publicly what that number is but it's a short leash at this point. And he's got good stuff tonight so far. He's got three strikeouts. D-backs and the Dodgers tied at one.
second inning, a D-back season ticket holders renew your season tickets now to be entered to win lunch with Luis Gonzalez and Randy Johnson. A thousand dollars cash and all inclusive vacation from American Airlines vacations and more. Renew now at dbacks.com slash advantage. Bottom second here in Los Angeles and Josh Reddick will lead it off for the Dodgers against Shelby Miller in a 1-1 ball game. Steve Berthew, Bob Brentley, and Tom Walsh with you. D-backs got a solo homer from A.J. Pollock. Justin Turner in RBI single. Reddick, 268 and nine homers. He doubled and scored last night. He was one for four. Acquired at the trade deadline from the Oakland Athletics. He's hit safely in five straight games. Shelby ahead one and two. Facing a very left hand heavy Dodger lineup as Bob mentioned earlier. Jake Lamb is going to be going back and forth all night long. I play more second base tonight <laughs> than he does third. Just missed with that fastball and it's two and two on Josh Reddick. Year after five seasons with the Oakland A's, acquired August 1st along with pitcher Rich Hill. Yeah, because of the way the season got started for Shelby Miller this year, uh, the numbers are not pretty lefty righty either way, but over the course of his career, Left handed hitters have hit about 40 points higher against Shelby Miller. He's also walked a lot more left handed hitters. So the Dodgers load up everybody but Justin Turner in the pitcher spot. Well, they went to a full count on Grandal before he got him to fly out to right to win the first. And now he's gone full on Reddick to open up the second. Jock Peterson will be next. That's a rifle shot just fouled oh. down the first baseline and the boy Emily that one knocked her down. She's a gamer though got right back up. We're going to stay with it. That's a tough carom. Well, that ball was hit hard too. Oh. Way to play it off Emily. It's a gamer. Yep. He's headed for the right center field gap. A.J. Pollock. He didn't get it. It drops in for a base at A.J. Almost made a tremendous shoestring catch, but Reddick's got a leadoff single. See A.J. shading a little toward the gap in left center. Had a long run to get to that ball. Plays it on the short op. Holds Reddick to a single. Doc Peterson one for three with a home run last night. So he's been a 20 homer man for both full seasons in his major league career. He's hitting 241. And again, Shelby is trying to find a comfort level out there and establish some flow and rhythm. We'll have to work from the stretch right away. With Reddick at first and nobody out. Peterson has been a problem. He's homered six times in nine games against the D-backs this year. Fastballs in there for a strike, and it's one and one. Dave Roberts, the skipper. Six game homestand for L.A. They took two of three from San Diego over the weekend. One more against the Diamondbacks tomorrow night. Then they start a long road trip. 
Good pitch by Shelby had Peterson all spun around that it's one and two. Big curve ball from Shelby Miller that time. Yeah, Jock Peterson have that big leg kick he gets everything going trying to time up a fastball and if you can throw something off speed around the edges of the zone you'll get swings like that. Reddick six for eight in his stolen base attempts. He, like most of the Dodgers, as Bob mentioned earlier, not much of a base stealing threat. Peterson gets this high in the air, deep right center field. Tomas wants it. AJ will take it. Reddick is back to the bag, allowed out number one in the second. Left fielder, number 60, Andrew Tolles. Andrew Tolles, boy, this guy's been impressive. 371, called up to the big leagues for the first time in his career this year. We first saw him near the beginning of July, and he's put up some impressive numbers. Right now, since he's been back up for the minors, he's got 11 hits in his last 24 at bats, including three homers. He struck out in his only AB last night. And he drives one to right center. That'll reach the wall. Reddick's on the run. Chris Woodward going to wave him home. Here's the relay throw from Segura. It is in time. They got him. Really well done and executed by the Diamondbacks. Segura fired that one in there, and Wellington had it. And Reddick is cut down at the plate. Well, you can't do it any better than that. Ball splits the gap perfectly. A.J. with a strong throw into Gene Segura, who really unleashes a strong throw to home plate all the way in the air to Wellington Castillo just in time to get Reddick. Shelby Miller fired up. Well, his defense bit him at pass ball in the bottom of the first, and the slow jump by Tomas on that blue single led to a Dodger run, but that one they were able to cut down at the plate, keep it a 1-1 ball game. And here's the pitcher stripling. So it's 8 4 2 on the put out of Reddick at home. Score that a double for Tolls. Oh, I love those perfectly executed relays. That's one of the things you work on so hard in spring training and several times throughout the course of the season. The team will be out on the field early working on cutoffs and relays. When the situation calls for it in a game, you'd like to think that uh, you've had enough practice at that play, and that time they executed it perfectly. Yeah, that was gorgeous. 96 from Shelby, but he can't get the call from Doug Eddings back there, and it's 2-1 and one on the pitcher stripling. It's a fair ball down the right field line. This will deliver tolls, and the Dodgers take the lead. Ross tripling the pitcher, an RBI single. Somehow just managed to keep that fair. Now one for 21 on the season here at the major league level. However, he was a 231 hitter in the minor leagues. Just keeps this inside the first base foul line over the bag and down into the corner for an RBI single. You know, Shelby had a couple of those Wednesday at San Francisco where you just go, really? But he was able to shake it off against the Giants. He'll have to keep going here in the second. Now it's 2-1 LA. And the leadoff man, Chase Utley, steps in. Utley grounded out his first time up.
Utley's been a productive bat for the Dodgers over the last month or so. Just when you think, well, maybe he'll start slowing down. He's 37. He'll be 38 in December. But he's hit about 300 since August 10th. Yank that fastball on Wellington as an alarm bell go off. 2 0. Oh. Shelby was saying after the start against the Giants, he found his old mechanics while he was down in AAA. Because mostly with Reno, and Phil Nevin is here with us now, too. We can ask Phil about this. That Shelby just went back to basics, didn't really think about anything as far as staying back with his motion or whether his glove was too high or something like that. He just, he just stopped playing around with the mechanics and got back to what he used to do in the past, which was trying to be an athletic pitcher out there. He's a very good athlete. And when he does that, it just kind of clicks for him. So he's trying to find that groove here tonight. And he's had traffic around him on the bases all night long so far. It's right back on Utley, and it's two and two. It's very similar to a hitter. If you're thinking about where are my hands, where are my feet, and am I inhaling or exhaling, am I seeing the ball? By the time you process all that, the ball's by you. <laughs> I bet. You know, as a pitcher, you can't be thinking about your mechanics. They have to be second nature. All right to Goldie this time. Steps on the first base bag, and that's the end of the inning. But the Dodgers get another run. They lead it 2-1. advice uh -huh. if you don't mind okay. I um, I have a Twitter account it's called Todd's garage and it's sort of an archaeological dig of my baseball obsession as a kid but Bob Brenly over there yes you know Bob right oh I do indeed okay well he's he's kind of sticking it uh, to me a little bit and and stirring the pot he, he thinks I'm a hoarder ah isn't that part of the beauty of this game is that you, you can take anything that you want from it and have a memory uh, if that's what you want <laughs> yes. So, in other words, yes. Yes, you down are a hoarder. hoarder. Down goes Frazier, I think. Is Show him the big ball of string. No, I won't do that. Uh, hey, welcome back, guys. And there's a look at Vince Scully. Get back to the game here in a moment. But that was uh, obviously our interview that we did last year as we continue to celebrate and pay homage to Van as he blessed our giveaway from Todd's Garage. And I'll just never forget the look on his face when I mentioned that. And, and you, Bob, obviously, he's a big fan of you. And Yes, he is indeed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brandon Bob. Jury leads it off. <laughs> Brandon. 
Gets that one out to left field, but Andrew Tolles runs it down, and that's the first down. Five in a row set down by Ross Stripling. Well, if, if I could, guys, if you don't mind, I'd like to make an announcement. We we have already Did just uh, declared a winner of the second Vin Scully bobblehead from Todd's Garage. There it is. Despite it's, the I'm, fact that it's broken? Yes, and, and here's the deal. Uh, I was going to have a long, drawn-out contest, but a woman named Lori Laney, who was watching the show, just tweeted to me, and she said, and I quote, if people don't get the $6 million man reference, Oscar Goldman, a.k.a. Richard Anderson, they don't deserve the Vin Scully bobblehead, I right? I cannot argue with that logic. So I was thinking, if you guys would bless this, here's a pitch, and it's a strike. I think Lori wins it, right? For playing the six million dollar man, that means she was listening last night. She's you know how now. well you know how in the front office you have uh, advisors, special assistants. I've read of those guys. Yeah. I, I think Bob and I would like to be in terms of Todd's garage, more of a special assistant, occasionally oh. just advise. I, okay. I, I, so you're the Willie Bloomquist and yeah. JJ Putz of my world. Assistant curators. There you go. Wow. We'll, we'll serve on the board. Okay. And uh, hand, out, hand out various grant monies, <laughs> as such, <laughs> such as they are. But other than that, I'm going to let you handle the day-to-day -day stuff. All right, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'll, I'll put that into consideration. And on advisement from no one but me, I think Lori gets the, she gets the bobblehead. Good for me. Don't you think? Yep. And now we move on. And I, and I thank you both uh, for, for taking part in our show tomorrow giving us your perspective that we'll share along with Greg Schulte and Tom Candiani on, on the great Vince Scully. You guys have great insight and offer great, great words of wisdom. Oh, what a stop by Turner. Our pleasure. That's a quick inning for Ross Stripling, who has now set down seven straight. How about three pitches, or pardon me, three outs on five pitches. D-backs down 2-1. Half of the third inning, time to take a look back at baseball history brought to you by Geico. Fernando Valenzuela on this day back in 1981 shut out the St. Louis Cardinals five to nothing, giving him his seventh shutout of the season, tying a rookie record. The amazing thing was his first eight starts of the season, five of those were shutouts. Fernando Mania. Boy. Between the bird Mark Fidrich in 1976 yep. and Fernando Maney in 81, I, I don't think baseball has seen anything like those two years with a, a rookie pitcher who just captured an entire nation's attention like those two guys did those, those two seasons. I mean, it's been attempted to try to stir up that kind of interest. Steven Strasburg jumps to yeah. mind immediately as a guy that came into the league with a lot of hype, but as far as fulfilling that hype, yeah, Fernando and the Bird, they, they really did it well. Shelby Miller ahead of Corey Seager, one and two, as he leads off the third. Seager singled and scored his first time up. He's already got four hits in the series. Yeah. 
Make it five. A lead on single for the rookie shortstop. The amazing thing about Fernando Valenzuela and Fernando Mania, you know, we come out to the ballpark at 1 o'clock in the afternoon as players. There'd be 30,000 people lined up waiting to get in at 1 o'clock in the afternoon to watch Fernando pitch. He was a phenomenon. And he was one of those guys like John Smoltz. I'd put in the same category. If he'd have been a center fielder, he would have been a really good center fielder. He was just a good athlete. Could hit, could run. And they were honoring various Dodger employees before the ball game today. And one of them was Mike Brito, the famous Dodger scout who always sits behind home plate wearing the Panama hat and the dark sunglasses. He was the one that found Fernando Valenzuela in the tiny Mexican town. It's been suggested that uh, Dwight Gooden in 1984, he was that good, but didn't, it wasn't quite the same cultural phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It was a big baseball deal, but the Bird and Fernando, that was a cultural event every time they pitched. One and one on Justin Turner. I mentioned this on a previous telecast, but uh, facing Fernando Valenzuela, there was a very short period of time where he was very predictable. In the air, left center field, and that one bounces over the wall. A ground rule double for Justin Turner. Seeger has to stop at third. So Seeger and Turner both two for two. And the Dodgers already leading 2 1. And second and third, nobody out for Adrian Gonzalez. Why would he uh, get predicted to throw the screwball all the time? Well, if, if he fell behind in the count, threw a first pitch fastball, let's say, and it was ball one, you could bet the ranch he was going to throw the screwball, the changeup, on the 1-0 pitch. He basically pitched backwards. If he fell behind in the count, he'd throw his off-speed stuff. If he jumped ahead in the count, he would bust you inside with fastballs. And like I said, for a very short period of time, you could kind of take advantage of that, but he figured it out rather quickly. Shelby has been pitching from the stretch virtually the entire ball game. Dodgers already with seven hits. It is something to see Fernando just you know, walking around the press box up here, having dinner, having lunch, just like a regular guy. And you think back to 81 when he was a legend and still is. against Shelby Miller so far in the game. Five have come off of fastballs, one on a cut fastball, and one on a curveball. We talk about location being a key for Shelby Miller tonight. Got to keep that fastball out of the middle. Well, he's yet to record an out in the third and about to throw his 50th pitch. Falling off to the side a little bit too much there, and it's two and one. 50 pitches, 32 strikes. Gonzalez is hit in six straight. His home run last night is 17th of the year. it right to Chris Owings. Everybody back safely. That's the first out in the third. Well, Gonzalez had to feel like he had a couple of RBIs right there. Instead, it's out number one. Hey, that's Chris Owings' position kind of up the middle of the field that time for Gonzalez. Now they'll huddle up as Yasmani Grandal steps in. Grandal flat out to right field at his first at bat to win the first. See the numbers on Grandal, 24 home runs, the most by a Dodgers catcher since Paul LaDuca hit 25 15 years ago. And he's a switch hitter. Almost all his power comes from the left-hand side. 
Seeger is at third, and Turner at second, one out. You do have a base open here, and Josh Reddick, uh, even though he got a base hit his first time up in the ball game today, has not looked as comfortable at the plate as Yasmani Grandal has. Be careful. Yeah, Reddick has been slow to pick up the pace as a Dodger. He's played in 28 games and hit under 200. Now this might be one of those at bats. If Shelby happens to fall behind 2 0, you just go ahead and pass him intentionally and set up a potential double play. If you throw a strike here, then maybe try to expand the zone a little bit, get him to chase something. Infield creeping in a bit. Segura smothers it. He's got no play at the plate. And Seeger scores to make it 3-1. No way Gene was going to get up, recover, and cut down the run. And so it's an RBI for Grandal. Nice play. Uh, probably prevented the second run from coming around and scoring. Reddit. That ball gets through into right field. And Gene took a look and realized he had no play. Just flipped it on the goal to get easy out at first. Here is Reddick. Singled and was thrown out at home trying to score in the second. On a perfectly executed relay, A.J. Pollock to Gene Segura to Wellington Castillo. So the Dodgers lead at 3-1 now, two outs and Justin Turner at third. Jake Lamb near that third base bag, and you see where Chris Owings is on the first base side of second. Reddick Homer here Saturday in a win over the Padres. He had produced next to nothing since he was traded from Oakland at the deadline. Only one extra base hit in his first 26 games. But he's starting to come around a little bit lately. Doubled and scored a run last night. Drops that one into right center field. Turner can jog home, and it's 4-1. Tomas can't pick it up out there. And Reddick will take a big turn and go back to first. Yasmani came very close to handing Reddick an extra 90 feet. He's still moving his neck and shoulders around out there after that diving attempt back in the first inning. Number 31, inning. John Peterson. John Peterson flying to center his first time up. Now eight hits for the Dodgers. They lead it 4-1. Never a good sign when the opponent's first base coach has ankle guards on his foot, on his wrist, in his back pocket. That means he's had a lot of company down there in the inning. That's George Lombard ready to open up a sporting goods store down there. And he's got to hold his stopwatch. D backs with Reddick at first. Don't put the shift on for left hand hitting Peterson, but they do back Segura way out to short right field. Chris Owings in his normal shortstop spot. Jake Lamb near the third base bag. They'll be behind 3-0. Dodgers with one in the first, one in the second, and two more here in the third. Diamondbacks only run coming on A.J. Pollock's solo shot in the first, his second this year. Here's Segura. Drops the ball, falls over. Peterson's aboard. Throw in a second. 
And Redick is back safely. Very tricky play out there for Gene. A big clump of grass and dirt came up. Replace your divots. And Andrew Tolles will be the hitter. For 60, Andrew Tolles. Well, not only the infield, but the outfield here at Dodger Stadium is like a putting green. The ball really shoots through the infield and the outfield for that matter. Gene made a nice play just to stop that ball. Mike Butcher pays a visit. Dodgers now with four runs on nine hits through two and two third. Miller at 60 pitches. Well, some of the nine hits have been struck extremely well. Others just have found holes in the Diamondbacks defense, but nine hits is nine hits in three innings. Not missing many bats. And Tolles had one of those hits his first time up in the second. He drilled one all the way to the wall in right center field. He's got 12 hits in his last 25 at bats. And he's hitting 381. Reddick at second and Peterson at first, two outs. Spinner up the line that rolls foul for Goldie. Edward Escobar has started warming up in the Diamondback bullpen. Well, this Dodger lineup loaded with left-handed hitters tonight. It figured to be a lefty, the first man up in the bullpen for the Diamondbacks, and it's Escobar. We've mentioned all the roster moves. The roster now at 33 for the Diamondbacks. So they do have some other arms back there. Dominic Leone, Steve Hathaway, and Matt Cook. Called up for the first time, waiting to make his major league debut, the big right hander. 0 and 1 on tolls. One of the things the D-backs liked about Shelby last week was the way that against the Giants, when guys got on base, it didn't rattle Shelby. He sort of stayed in the moment and kept pitching in and out of trouble. But he's just not been able to avoid trouble here tonight. Hits keep dropping in. Not able to control the tempo or the situation. Behind on holes, three and one. The pitcher Stripling, who has an RBI single, is on deck. He'd be next. Full count, three and two. That'll get the runners started. Reddick at second and Peterson from first. There go the runners up the middle and it bounces into center field. Reddick will score. Peterson heads for third and it's 5-1 LA. Andrew Tolles, two for two. Tolles has been a real handy player for Dave Roberts. All he does is hit. Three home runs on the season all have come with men on base. He pushes his batting average with runners on base up to about 450. That's now 10 hits for the Dodgers. And Shelby Miller still trying to get out of this third inning. The pitcher is stripling.
Diamondbacks have not won a series in this ballpark since June of 2013. And since that last series win here, they are 7-22 and 22 at Dodger Stadium. A tough one last night, now behind early 5-1 here. Stripling kind of chopped at that one. No one won. Well, it seems like this has become a nightly occurrence, but the Angels right-hander Ricky Nolasco has a perfect game through five innings against the A's. Ooh, hang with him, Mel. <laughs> He's been hanging. Tolls takes off for second. Stripling chops at it, but it rolls to Segura, who will end the inning. But the Dodgers get three. They lead it 5 1. Some work to do. They trail the Dodgers 5-1 as we start the fourth inning here in L.A. d fans, if you can't watch the games on your television, you can stream them live on your mobile device. Just use the all-new Fox Sports Go app. Download the app and take Fox Sports Arizona and d baseball with you wherever you go. Well, Ross Dripling stake to a 5-1 lead. He'll face Chris Owings, A.J. Pollock, and Paul Goldschmidt, 2-3-4 in the Arizona fourth. Stripling, the rookie right-hander, Boy, compared to uh, Shelby Miller, Stripling has been cruising. This is like a holiday. He's retired seven straight, and he has yet to pitch from the stretch where Shelby has been in the stretch since the second batter of the ball game. Yeah, really, it's hard to think of too many mistakes that Stripling has made in this game. Obviously, the one to A.J. Pollock, a fastball in the inner third of the plate, mid-thighs, and A.J. hit it out of here. But other than that, he has been dotting his spots. Yeah, Pollock's solo homer in the first, the only D-backs hit so far, and C.O. leads off the fourth after grounding out his first time up. Chris Owings really began playing shortstop every day. On July 31st. Prior to that, he'd played a lot of center field, even after coming off the DL from that plantar fasciitis. But since July 31st, he has been the man down there at shortstop, and he's really hit, and he's got another one. Drops it into the right field corner. Reddick over to cut it off. Owings on the run, headed for second, and he's in there. CO. A leadoff double. That's his 20th this year. He's got 11 hits in his last 17 at-bats. 
Jumping out over the plate. Mentioned it earlier. AJ or CO rather likes that high fastball and just tomahawk that one down into the corner. Yes, I'm on the base. Yeah. <laughs> well, if he went into a slide, there was a possibility that there could have been a tag applied even that far off the base, so he just ran around the defender. AJ's homer in the first is second of the year. Got a 3-2 hanger from Stripling. Hit it halfway up the bleachers and left. This was A.J. Pollock with two outs in the first inning against Ross Stripling. Watch where this pitch is. Very promising start for the Diamondbacks. Got that cut fastball up and in. Just mashed it out of here up near that aisle out there. Halfway up the bleachers. Pitch looked like it was up, but Doug Eddings says strike two. Chase that one that's five strikeouts for Stripling one down in the fourth and here's Goldie. He was a little ball upset ball. that high strike call on a breaking pitch. Ends up chasing one out of the zone low and away. Hey, Ross Stripling just look how many times he throws that slider and starts it right on the outside corner of the plate breaking off the plate low and away to the right handed hitter. Goldie struck out to end the first. Ross Stripling's biggest hurdle this year has been length. He has struggled getting deep into games. And he's usually done right around the fifth inning. But that doesn't look like it's going to be the case tonight. He's thrown over 100 pitches in a game only twice all year. And both of those outings were back in April. Including his major league debut against the Giants, which was a no-hitter. Carried the no-hitter through seven and a third. That was his first major league start as you mentioned 100 pitches April 8th at San Francisco one out in the eighth inning and Dave Roberts pulled him out of the bowl game and because Stripling is coming off Tommy John surgery a little over two years ago he's on a very tight pitch count they were not going to mess around. But they want him to be more efficient. They, in fact, sent him to rookie ball in Arizona for a month in the middle of the year just to sharpen up some mechanics. And Stripling owned that. It was kind of a weird delivery. He was all arm and no legs. And he would get to that 80 pitch mark. And he said you could almost see him lose it right there. With very little legs involved, all arm. So he went to rookie ball for a month and got his lower half a little more involved. 50 pitches so far tonight, 32 strikes. Goldie drives this one to Peterson in center. It drops in front. Owens had to hold up. He'll stop at third. And the Diamondbacks have runners on the corners with one out for Jake Lamb. Number 22, Jake Lamb. Jake rounded out to lead off the second inning. So now we'll see how Stripling does with traffic around him. As we mentioned, he pretty much cruised into the fourth. But an Owings double, a Goldie single, to have runners in the corners with one out.
Sky high center field for Peterson. Owings at third. It's pretty shallow. CO going to try and come in anyway. Here's the throw. It bounces off the mound. And Owings is in there. Goldie is in at second. And it's 5 2. The throw had a chance to get him, but the Dodgers got a bad break on that when it kicked straight up off that mound. Wellington Castillo. You're absolutely right. That's the best thing that could have happened for the D backs right here. Peterson stays behind the ball. Looked like a strong throw. Hits off the back of the mound, shoots straight up in the air. That allows Goldie to move into scoring position. Good alert base running there by the trail runner. RBI for Jake Lamb. Here's Beef Wellington. The run is in. Goldie at second, two outs. Castillo struck out his first time up. third for Turner and that ends the inning Diamondbacks get one more back we'll head to the home half of the fourth they trail the Dodgers 5-2. against the Dodgers Brock Stewart in the series finale that leads us nicely into our quick and loans rocket arms the strikeout leaders for these two ball clubs Robbie Ray among the best in the business 183 strikeouts Kenta Maeda who got the win of the ball game last night had eight strikeouts in that victory 156 he leads the Dodgers Chase Utley leads off the fourth against Shelby Miller L.A. has a 5-2 lead. They've out hit the Diamondbacks 10-3. Ten hits, the most Shelby Miller has ever allowed through three innings. Previous high was seven. Utley has twice grounded out. He's 0 for 2. Seventy pitches, forty two strikes. Excited about that new show pitch. I, I happen to know a couple of people involved in the production there. You know a guy? I know a guy. Does, is that a, is that public knowledge? Yes. yes, I can I have clearance to mention that JR, <laughs> who always takes such great care of us here at LA, is you're welcome, JR. He's is in the credits. He's a what is your title? What's your title? Coordinating producer of that new series about a girl pitcher. Mm -hmm. And that's coming. That's going to be fun. So when you look at the credits, 
Just look for JR. There it is. <laughs> right there. Look, you did, you, camera one. <laughs> Just happened to have that there, did you, John? Yeah, how did that get there? Into the shift, a one hopper to Segura from the outfield grass, and Utley's 0 for 3. There are, uh, you know who's in that show, it's I heard? Corey Seager. Our boy Mud from the Padres. Oh, Mark Grant. Yeah, he's got a, a cameo in there. Yeah, I heard he's good. Matt Vasgersian in there as well. So, uh, look for that show coming up. Well, we didn't want to be in the movie. You know, well, you think knowing JR as we do, but <laughs> neither, yeah, we're next. Pitch two. Yeah, neither one of our phones rang, hard to believe. <laughs> Seager two for two. He's L.A. people. That's drifting into the seats and out of play, and Shelby's ahead of Seager 0-2. I wonder what they will call the Seager. Secondary pitch? Oh, I like what you've done there. You maybe they should have uh, you as a consultant or coordinating, <laughs> coordinating big shot, something or other. Yeah, coordinate something. This is the land of sequels, after all. I saw the other day they're remaking MacGyver. Really? Yeah, there's another MacGyver coming no out kidding. now. They just they've run out of ideas. Called strike three. Shelby Miller gets the strikeout. That's his first tonight. He finally retires Seeger, who's got five hits in the series. A little bit of a back cutter that time. Seeger just kind of quit on it. The ball cut right back to the corner. Nice job by Welly to hold it right there and get the call from Doug Eddy. Really nice pitch by Shelby. Now he'll work to Justin Turner, who has single, doubled, scored a run, and knocked in a run. JR's down there at all those uh, Laker Clipper games, too. He, he's down there in the Nicholson seats. Mm -hmm. Come on, Jack. Yep. Hobnobbing with the rich and famous. That's those are his people. Champagne wishes and caviar dreams. <laughs> I think Mary Hart is down there in her usual seat. Do you know Mary Hart? No, what well, no. Why not? Met her once. All right. There she is. She's a big fan. She's here all the time. A lot of games, yeah. yeah. Ball to center right to AJ. And he's got it. And Shelby Miller has a 1, 2, 3, 4. Diamondbacks trail the Dodgers 5 2.
In the top of the fifth. I love, how, Garvey. I love how Garvey has the sweater tied around. Still. Yeah, it's great. It's the like, same one from 74. Classic Steve Garvey, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Hey, uh, listen, guys, I, yeah. Bob, I know you're not going to like the video that I have for you here, but I just want to show you. This is part of the uh, crossover support and respect for Vince Scully. It happens here and only here at Dodger Stadium. The umpires before every game, and they exchange the lineup cards. They then turn to Vin. It started somewhere, I think, in 2005. Wait, I, I thought they were saluting us in our booth. Yeah, and not Ricky Vaughn. Charlie Sheen is here. By the way, I, I worked on Major League with him. I don't know if you guys know this, but the spring training scenes for that movie were shot at High Corbett Field sure. in Tucson. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not going to tell you about Tom Berenger's arm and his inability to throw. Charlie Sheen is a big-time baseball fan. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a crazy baseball fan. He was throwing there in the high 80s. 88 on the jugs gun, I think. Yeah, he was. I mean, when he was Ricky Vaughn in Major yep. League, he looked like a real pitcher. Yeah, he did. It's Monty Tomas. Fly ball to center field for Peterson. And, guys, I, I don't know if you, you heard it. I, I did mention it on the pregame show, and I'm sure you're going to talk a little bit more about this, but we're excited to, to say that tomorrow night, our final night here at Dodger Stadium of the season, that in the second inning, I know you'll turn the reins over to the Dodger broadcast. We'll hear Vin's call of the second inning, right, Steve? I think that kid's got a future in the business. <laughs> Give him a shot. If he chooses to pursue it, yeah, we could be good. Yeah, we just found out about that, actually. Nobody told that uh, we weren't at the meeting. You know, the conference call? No. We lead the league in those, by the way. Apparently. Brandon Drury. See, I thought we're going to have this on the pregame show, but if I could go there a little bit with you, I, I thought you had a very profound statement today that we'll share with everybody on uh -oh. Dundex Live and of a certain generation about Ben that, because you're an East Coast guy. And, and Boston, I was, born and raised. I was born in New York. And I was raised to dislike you intensely. Yep. I, there's about 8,000 jokes, and I'll stop. <laughs> but I, I just like what you said about your perspective on Vin growing up, because I had sort of the same. Yeah, he was the event because back in the day when you had to sit in front of the console TV like I did as a kid and actually reach up to change one of four channels there was a Saturday game of the week and Vin was on that a lot and he was on the all-star game which was always a big deal when I was a kid because the two leagues played against each other for that one time other than the postseason which obviously was also a big event and Brandon Drury grounds out two down so anytime you heard Vin Scully doing a baseball game you knew it was a big deal and yeah. it in many ways still is yep. Number 26, it's just so dramatically different from the people that you talk to here in Southern California who you know, as Tom Candiotti will say tomorrow on the show he fell asleep listening to Vin Scully call Dodger games and dream of playing in a game that Vin called and then he I did know. Hundreds of thousands of people fall asleep to Tom Candiotti. <laughs> and that's in the second inning. <laughs> oh, man. <Ouch. laughs> wow. Candy's still the king of this place. Now, you walk in the ballpark with Candy, and it's like the governor got here. He's still a big Dodger person in that regard. Knows the names of all the security people, everybody. The guy at the gate, the guy at the elevator, they all know him. He knows it's great. You walk around with Candy here, I and mean, he's the mayor. So what will you guys do in that half inning that Vin's going to essentially mow your lawn? Hmm. Good question. I don't know. We just found out, so <laughs> I haven't had time to think about it. I, I didn't know until you mentioned it, so I guess it's okay. Normally it would be a dash to the pizza stand and then yeah. come back, but there's the candy man. Pizza's Doing terrible here. d Radio with the governor, Greg Shilton. No good, huh? Well, I have to settle for a Dodger dog. It's always top of the list. So Vin's not actually coming in here. He's no, just going to. No, no, right. no. We throw a switch somewhere and somebody else throws a switch and then. There he is. Just like that, yeah.
I, I, if I could say selfishly, I hope it's a a lengthy inning, guys. It's been a lengthy career, that's for sure. He's still the best in the business. Shelby Miller grounds out a one, two, three, fifth for Stripling. He leads it five two. will lead off the LA fifth Fans celebrate Hispanic Heritage Day at Chase Field it's coming up Saturday September 10th presented by Bud Light you'll enjoy a pregame APS Street Festival before the game against the Giants authentic carne asada food live music mariachi and a whole lot more plus the first 20,000 fans get a Los d soccer jersey that's courtesy of Pepsi for tickets visit d Adrian Gonzalez 0 for 2 He'll be followed by Asmani Grandal and Josh Reddick against Shelby Miller. Who's thrown 80 pitches, 51 for strikes. Dodgers about hit the D-backs 10-3. They lead it 5-2. D-backs have the shift on, and that's ball one. Summer began very slowly for Adrian Gonzalez. He hit just about 220 in June. There was a back problem that lingered on all the way from spring training, so there wasn't a whole lot of power to speak of. Just six home runs in the first three months of the year. He had a pinched nerve back there, but once that cleared up, he has been his usual self at the plate. Last 60 games, he's hit about 330 with 11 home runs. His home run in the fourth inning last night came on a high fastball. I mean, up above the letters high. Just tomahawked it out of here to right field. Just like that. And that's when you can tell that he's feeling better when he hits it with some authority to his pole field. And it'll jog into second with a double is 28. He typically uses the whole field, Gonzalez, but when he's feeling right, he'll hit it hard to right field. Over the plate, got some extension that time and hooked it down into that right field gap. Edwin Escobar still warming up in the D backs bullpen. The 11th hit for LA. Here's Grandal, the catcher. shot down the right field line and out of play. Now it's Monty Grandal, a much better hitter when he's here in Dodger Stadium. 
He's got 18 home runs in this ballpark, only six on the road. And you can see the difference. Just about 270 here, 190 away from L.A. Thought this was not supposed to be a hitter's park. Maybe it's that drought carried over from last year. <laughs> nice and cool here tonight. Very comfortable. One and two on the Dodger catcher. He's hit safely in five straight. Three homers and eight RBIs during his five game hitting streak. Ball missed inside, and it's two and two. Grandall to bite on any of the two strike pitches just off the edge of the plate. Oh, run the count to full. And he gets the big strikeout. The second for Shelby, one down in the fifth. Almost the same pitch that Shelby missed on twice to Grandall. Couldn't get him to swing at it until the count goes to full. Comes right back to that cutter inside. Grandall chops right over the top of it. And that's going to be it for Shelby Miller tonight. He goes four and a third. And the left-hander Edwin Escobar is on his way in from Diamondback Bullpen. Back from L.A. right after this. Credit Union pitching change brings us the left-hander Edwin Escobar, who is quickly winning the trust of the Diamondbacks defenders behind him. There's a confidence level that's rising when he comes into the ball game. He's been very effective lately. He's got Adrian Gonzalez at second. The one out and the batter is Josh Reddick. 
Escobar worked a scoreless inning Friday against the Rockies came back Saturday at Colorado had a long battle with Gerardo Parra and eventually struck him out to end a Colorado threat a big spot in that ball game turned out to be a Diamondback win he was just pounding away with fastballs against Gerardo and finally got him to chase a slider for the strikeout Reddick two for two, a pair of singles. He's got an RBI and score to run. One and two. Eleven hits allowed by Shelby Miller, who went four to third tonight. That ties a career high. Josh Reddick this year now no extra base hits in 90 at bats against left hand pitching and Escobar had him over right there John two down. Peterson. Big sweeping breaking ball ends up way off the plate away. Now to work to another lefty John Peterson. All these lefties in the starting lineup tonight for Dave Roberts means he's got seven right handed bats available off the bench. Peterson singled his last time up. He's one for two. His dugouts are crowded in September. The bullpens as well. LA's bullpen is busy. Drops that slow breaking ball in there for strike one. Escobar sends his latest recall from Reno in the middle of last month. Has appeared in 10 games and pitched to a 169 ERA. He's gotten lefties out in critical spots. And because he's been starting all season for Reno, he can give him multiple innings out of the bullpen if you want to go that way. Or, as we found out more and more lately, you can match him up against lefties. That's out of play. Dodgers have a right hander Josh Fields warming up in their bullpen. Can't get Peterson to bite at that one and it's two and two. Ball missed the count is full. A little bit of a quick pitch that time from Escobar. I think uh, Chuck Peterson asking Doug Edding behind a plate, is that legal? Can he do that? <laughs> He's kind of jumped into that delivery. I don't think Peterson was quite ready for it. I'm not so sure Doug Eddings was ready for it. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Tried it again and missed. A walk to Peterson brings up. The pesky Andrew Tolls, who has doubled and singled tonight. He scored a run, he's got an RBI. He's a good looking young player. Yeah. 
Adrian Gonzalez at second, and Jock Peterson at first with two outs. We might see a pinch hitter in this particular spot. I uh, mentioned seven right handed bats, including Howie Kendrick, Yasiel Puig, available off the bench, but he stays with Tolls. A little harmless fly ball to center for Pollock, and Escobar strands two. We are through five at Dodger Stadium. D backs trail it 5 2. Of the sixth inning. Hey fans, when the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. A day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. and our promo code D-backs50. PapaJohns.com. Sixth inning in L.A. New pitcher for the Dodgers. So oh, they just showed Ice Cube on the board. The place went crazy. It's Josh Fields. Acquired from the Houston Astros at the trade deadline for a minor league infielder. And he's on in relief of Ross Dripling, who worked five innings and gave up only two runs on three hits. Gene Segura, the leadoff man, will lead it off in the Arizona sixth. Well, I didn't know so many stars are going to be here tonight. This yeah. is a real Dodger game. Kind of funny though, they showed Steve Garvey, he got a nice round of applause. Showed Tommy Lasorda, he got a nice round of applause. They showed Ice Cube, and the place went crazy. Yeah, it sure did. <laughs> I guess it was a good day. Gene red hot over the last month, hitting 370 since August 6th. But so far tonight, 0 for 2. Who was the the big star or stars that were always here when you were playing in this ballpark for the Giants? I don't recall that. Uh, they had regulars, a lot of stars. Yeah, I don't know. You know like uh, I was so focused Edward, on the game. Edward G. Robinson, or <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Marilyn Monroe, Tony Curtis. No, I a little before your day. I don't know. I don't know. Captain and Tennille. Even that was too soon. The stars were on the field. There you go. As it should be. <laughs> Sky high, first base side, drifting out to shallow right is Utley. One out of the sixth.
You don't get too worked up about the movie and TV type. Now you you like the rock stars. I like the rock stars. Yeah, that'll yeah. get your attention. Get behind some music. But yeah, you know, I like to watch movies. I enjoy movies. I appreciate the talent involved, but eh, I don't need my picture taken with everybody that's been on television. Well, any idiot can get on television. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Wait, what? <laughs> Chris Owings doubled and scored his last time up. Chris, 11 hits in his last 17 at bats. He is rolling right now. Two hits last night. Four consecutive multi hit games. He can make it five with another hit tonight. Uh, this is the proverbial chicken and the egg. Which came first? Does the confidence come first or do the hits come first? It seems like Chris Owings is laying off those breaking pitches that he was swinging at earlier in the season. When he does get a fastball in the strike zone, he's barreled it up. Like that. Sends it out to Reddick in right field. Well, you have some success and you feel good about yourself when you go up there to the plate. Start laying off the pitches you cannot handle and start putting good swings on pitches you can handle, and they just seem to follow. A.J. Homer in the first is second of the year. D-backs had a one nothing lead. They now trail it five two. Dodgers with one in the first one in the second and three in the third against Shelby Miller. to third for Turner. Close play at first. A.J. almost had that beat, but Stu Sherwater says nope, and that's the end of the inning. Chappelle has his hand up on the top step. They'll take a close look. Dodgers will hold up here. We've seen this a few times with Justin Turner on routine ground balls. He tends to take his time, extra step or two, and then just kind of flips it across the diamond to first, and A.J. was just streaking down that first baseline. And Sherlock on the phone and he says yep they got him so there'll be no challenge. Diamondbacks trail at 5-2 in L.A.
5-2 in the bottom of the sixth inning here in L.A. You can follow Diamondbacks Baseball live with the MLB.com at Bat app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast news, the whole thing. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball. On your phone and tablet, Kike Hernandez will hit for the pitcher fields against Edwin Escobar to lead off the Dodger sixth. Been something of a lost season for Kike Hernandez, who hit over 300 last year in his first season in L.A. and just crushed left-hand pitching. But he's battled slumps and injuries this season. He's hitting only 196. Tapper foul, and it's one and two. Quick pitch, and it blew it right by him. Edwin Escobar gets his second strikeout, one down in the sixth. Well, it's become a very popular uh, tactic for pitchers out there on the mound. Of course, Johnny Cueto uh, most notably uses the quick pitch and the dipsy do and the shimmy shake and all the other things, but more and more pitchers are starting to go to that quick pitch in certain situations. How much of hitting is timing? Oh, it's all about timing. And if you see a couple of deliveries from a pitcher, then it's a very nice deliberate wind up or stretch position and time everything, get your swing where you want it to be, and then the guy pops one out of there quickly, you're not ready for it. Utley's grounded out three times. He's 0 for 3. Randall Delgado and Steve Hathaway are warming up in the Diamondback bullpen. Pedro Baez loosening up for Los Angeles. Shift is on for Utley. That's a strike. It's one and one. Here's Steve Hathaway, just one of the many roster moves today. Diamondbacks made seven roster moves. The clubhouse now full up of 33 players. Here's Baez, the right-hander. Fly ball, deep center field. A.J. Pollock at the track, at the wall, and he runs it down. Two outs. Well, the unfortunate reality is a lot of the major league clubhouses aren't designed to handle 33 or 38 or 40 guys. Sometimes you have to set up temporary lockers out in the hallway or in the shower. Well, it just creates so many possibilities, both in terms of the offense and the defense for the manager that you're playing the final month of the season under a completely different set of rules. Yeah. You can match up your relievers. You have pinch hitters ad nauseum. It completely changes the way that you work a game, right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, if you have a well-balanced bullpen, say this time of year, six righties and six lefties, you can play matchups the last three, four innings of a ball game. And those three, four innings could take a long time. 0-2 mm -hmm. oh on Corey Seager. Escobar looks very sharp tonight. He's walked one, struck out two so far. I mean, for those teams involved in a pennant race, uh, it's a huge advantage as well. You know, you bring up a guy from AAA that can run fast, a, a Billy Hamilton type. He may not get an at bat, he may not get a start the whole month of September, but if he comes in and pinch runs a couple times and steals a key base or scores from first on an extra base hit, to help you win a game, well, then that's worthwhile in a pennant race. Dodgers are in one right now, a four-game lead over the Giants atop the NL West. Seager swings through that one. Escobar gets another strikeout. And he works a one, two, three, six. Diamondbacks trail the Dodgers 5-2.
going to be Goldie Lamb and Castillo to lead it off here in the top half of the seventh inning. Hey fans, anytime the D-backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. A rough night for Shelby Miller. He gave up 11 hits that tied a career high. Diamondbacks only two runs on three hits so far. Ross Stripling very good through five. Fields worked a one, two, three, six. And now the hard throwing right hander Pedro Baez is on to start the seventh. It'll be Paul Goldschmidt, Jake Lamb, and Wellington Castillo. Four, five, and six for the Diamondbacks. Goldie has struck out in single tonight, one for two. Strike one. A.J. Pollock a solo homer in the first. Chris Owings a double. Goldie a single. Both those hits in the fourth. The only hits for the Diamondbacks tonight. They had four hits last night. 0-2 oh, on Goldie. Goldie has always crushed the ball at Dodger Stadium. But he's been quiet here this year. Five for 28 with one home run. A 331 career hitter in this ballpark. Jim Baez with that big fastball, average fastball velocity this year, 96.7. He throws a four seamer that'll have a little extra giddy up. He'll throw a two seamer from time to time when he's looking for a ground ball. Also has a change up and a hard slider. Everything hard. Yeah, D backs have certainly seen a lot of this guy. Six Goldie strikes out for the second time tonight. That's the first out of the seventh. This country hardball here, high fastball up above the belt to Goldie. Swings right through at that time. Rondal will get together with Baez as Jake Lamb steps up. Jake knocked in a run his last time up with a sacrifice fly. Something off, but it's strike one. Change up at 87. Check swing foul, and it's 0 and 2 on Jake. Dodgers four ahead of the Giants atop the National League West. Giants. One tonight at Colorado. They beat the Rockies 3 2. Michael Brenly's Red Sox lead at San Diego 5 1 in the seventh. Former D back Chris Young with a home run in that ballgame. Jackie Bradley Jr. also homered. JBJ.
jammed him, popped it up behind the second base bag for Seeger. Two outs, and here's Wellington Castillo. Wellington Castillo. Well, he has struck out and grounded out 0 for 2. D-backs trying to avoid their third consecutive 1-2-3 inning at the plate. Dodgers will have a Vin Scully commemorative coin night here at the ballpark. That's coming up September 24th, so they're even putting Vin on the money now. <laughs> Seems appropriate. Yeah. That's the presidential treatment. It's a fair ball down the left field line. Castillo shoots it in the corner. Tolls is slow to pick it up, and Wellington pulls in a second with his 23rd double. Quiet Thank night you. last night for Welly. Went 0 for 4. Struck out, grounded out, popped up to the right side twice, but this time he pulls one right down that third baseline. Fastball down and in. All the way down in the corner for Tolls and the security guards they look like a hockey team down there down that left field line. Look at them jumping over the boards. It's a line change. <laughs> we'll see if Tomas can get a hold of one here and the Diamondbacks can get right back in this. Only down three here in the seventh. Yeah, as Bonnie has struck out fly down. Still looking for his first hit in the series. Steve Hathaway, the left hander, is now the only one throwing in the D backs bullpen. Dodgers in the bottom of the seventh will have Turner, Gonzalez, and Grandal, three, four, and five. Bunch of lefties behind that. That's foul in front of Matt Williams at third. Steve Hathaway made his major league debut in this ballpark. Got roughed up at the end of July, but after that, pitched very well. One and two on Yasmani, 98 from Baez.
Fitz on that one, and it's two and two. Well, his plate discipline just keeps getting better and better. Pitch recognition. Swinging at strikes, taking the balls, making a lot of progress. Two and two. Tomas hammers it to left. Tolls is there, and he makes a nice sliding grab. And that ends the inning. We stretch in L.A. D-backs trail the Dodgers 5-2. Backs trail at 5 2. Fox Sports supports. Brad and team up with the mission continues as we commemorate the 15th anniversary of the events of 9 11. All over the country, the mission continues is bringing together veterans and civilians through local service projects and honoring this day in history by giving back to our communities. Visit foxsportsupports.com to learn more. New pitcher for the Diamondbacks, the right-hander Randall Delgado, 64 appearances at a 4-2-7 ERA. So this marks a career high in appearances for Randall. He last worked Saturday in the win over the Rockies. The right-hand hitting Justin Turner will lead it off. Bunch of lefties and a switch hitter behind him. Looks like Steve Hathaway will be coming in at some point in this inning, the rookie lefty. But still warming up in the D-back bullpen. Going over some notes a moment ago with the bullpen coach Garvin Alston. Turner has single doubled. He's got an RBI. He scored a run tonight. Ground a shortstop. Nice play by Chris Owings, who smothers that one and throws him out. First baseman number 23, Adrian Gonzalez. You know, a little bit of a range check up the middle of the field. Gets to that ball with a slide. Fires on the goal in plenty of time. Well, they've got the left-hander Hathaway ready, and here's Gonzalez, but they'll stick with Delgado. Gonzalez doubled his last time up. He's one for three. You could go with a lefty here to face Gonzalez and then flip Grandal around to the right hand side. Most of his power is as a left hand hitter. The switch hitting catcher is on deck. Shift is on for the Diamondbacks. The 1 0 to Gonzalez. 
Good pitch by Delgado, and it's one and one. Well, you think of Randall Delgado's season. There were some struggles early on. You know, the roles in the bullpen weren't firmly established as we got out of spring training and into the regular season. And then as the bullpen has changed over the course of the year, he's taken on more and more of a role later in the ball game, key situations. And for the most part, he's done a great job. He's probably been their most consistently effective relief pitcher this year. Came on in the seventh inning Saturday in the win over the Rockies and got a big strikeout of cargo to win that inning. And it was a solid bounce back effort by Randall in a ballpark that's been tough on him. After he had been hit pretty hard in his previous outing by the Giants in San Francisco. That's a strike. Doug Edding says two and two. And sometimes it's just a process of elimination. When you look around a bullpen at the beginning of the season, and you're one of the low guys on the totem pole, you look around, there's Tyler Clifford and Brad Ziegler and Daniel Hudson, and you know, you're, you're one of the other guys. Then you look around out there now and you go, wait a minute. I'm one of the senior members of this bullpen. Sure is. And he's pitching like it. Came over that Justin Upton trade several years ago. And now more and more pitching in these high leverage situations. Full count on Gonzalez three and two. And Randall Delgado strikes him out. Two down. Well, good arm action on this changeup ball fading yes, down and away from Gonzalez. Out front. Good pitch anyway. I think that was, would have been a strike on the outside corner. So Grandal will hit from the left hand side where he's homered now in three consecutive games for the first time in his career. He knocked it a run in the third inning with an RBI ground out. He's 0 for 3. Edwin Escobar was pretty sharp in two innings of relief of Shelby Miller, who came out after only four and a third. And now Delgado so far has retired Turner and Gonzalez, and he's ahead of Grandal 0 and 1. Dodger offense in innings one through three had five runs on 10 hits. They've had only one base hit since the start of the fourth. One and two. Josh Reddick on deck. He would be next. He's got two hits tonight. Here's a tapper that stays fair for Goldie. A tremendous outing by Randall Delgado who comes in and works a one, two, three, seven. Diamondbacks down three.
Drive High Speed Highlights presented by Cox. Diamondbacks with only four hits of the ball game so far. A.J. Pollock got it started in the first with his second home run this year. After an Owings double and a Goldie single, Jake Lamb, it's a high fly ball to center that brings home C.O. And that has been the Diamondbacks offense here tonight. They trail the Dodgers 5-2 as we start the eighth inning. And the new pitcher for L.A. What an acquisition this has been. It's the veteran Joe Blanton. 66 appearances that leads the team. It's also a career high for Blanton, who is uh, 11th in the National League in ERA as a reliever with that 2-5-1. He's done a very good job. He'll face Brandon Drury, then Ricky Weeks Jr. in the pitcher spot, followed by Gene Segura, 8-9-1 in the Diamondbacks 8. Brandon Drury has flied out, grounded out, 0 for 2. Swing of the bat very well right now. Had one of the game's big hits Sunday in the win over the Rockies in Denver. A two out, two run single. He's hit safely in four straight and five of his last six. But hitless so far tonight. Big swing by Drury. It's one and two. Williams kind of reinvented himself as a relief pitcher. As a starter, he was mostly power stuff, hard fastball, hard slider, mixing an occasional off-speed pitch. But as a reliever, he uses his whole arsenal, which is kind of unusual. You know, he was kind of like your typical fourth or fifth guy, back end of a rotation, give you some innings. But this experiment, if you want to call it that, or transition, has worked out wonderfully. Scoreless relief in 15 of his last 17 appearances since the end of July. Curry checks, and it's a full count, three and two. Ricky Weeks Jr. in those teal shoes will be next to hit for the pitcher. Looking for some base runners here. That'll work. A leadoff walk. Ricky Weeks Jr. announced as the hitter. He'll bat for Randall Delgado. Ricky hitting 249. He's got nine homers. Was the first walk issued by Dodger pitching tonight. Strike one. Ricky has a pinch hitter this year, 60 plate appearances. He's hit 184 with five doubles and five RBIs. Blanton jumps ahead 0 and 2. Chip Hale did have a couple left-handed hitters available to take this at bat. Socrates Brito and Chris Herman, who was just activated today. Ricky Weeks Jr. 0 for 11 lifetime against Joe Bland. Called strike three. Bland rings it up. Three 
sliders the first one to the front door for a called strike the next two out there on near the outside corner anyway close enough in the estimation of Doug Eddings to be called strikes. That'll bring up Segura who's 0 for 3. Five game hit streak on the line for Gene. First pitch swinging high in the air right center field. Peterson's over there with Reddick at the track. And he's got it just shy of the wall. Quickly two down. Stop, number 16, Chris Owings. Chris Owings now. Chris doubled and scored in the fourth, one for three. Now up to 290 on the year. Boy, Blanton seems like he takes just enough off to be a pain in the neck. He throws a lot of breaking pitches. I mentioned it earlier in the inning. As a relief pitcher, he'll throw slider after slider after slider, and then just about the time you think you have him set up for a fastball, he'll throw you a curve. <laughs> yeah. Can't check it. It's 0 2. Three straight sliders to Ricky Weeks. He's gotten CO to check swing on a couple of them here in this at bat. Dodgers in the bottom of the eighth will have Reddick, Peterson, and Tolls do up. Six, seven, and eight, three left hand hitters. Steve Hathaway still throwing down there in the bullpen. Looks like Jake Barrett has joined him. And Owing strikes out. Well, that's your typical Joe Blanton inning. Walks the leadoff man and retires one, two, three. Diamondbacks down five, two. Go to work. <laughs> Diamondbacks have to get to work. They trail it 5 2, bottom of the eighth inning. What's next? Brought to you by CenturyLink Series finale tomorrow night. Robbie Ray on the mound against Brock Stewart. First pitch at 7 10. Diamondback Live pregame show comes your way at 6 30 on Fox Sports Arizona. New pitcher for the D backs. Just up for the minors again. It's the lefty Steve Hathaway. 14 appearances, and this is rookie season. And he'll face Yasiel Puig, who will hit for Josh Reddick. Hathaway's first appearance with the Diamondbacks since August 24th. He saw a lot of action 
out of the bullpen last month for Chip Hale. Puig getting 265 with eight homers. The number's on Hathaway this year. He's ahead 0-1. Third base for Lamb. One out. Puig just up for the minor leagues himself. And a home run against the Padres Jock here on Peterson. Sunday. There's Jock Peterson. Peterson has singled and walked. He's one for two. Strike one. The shift is on for the Diamondbacks. Steve Hathaway was here most of last month in the big leagues and showed he can really compete at this level. After he had a rocky major league debut in this ballpark at the end of July. 13 appearances in August for Steve. Nine innings and he had an ERA last month right at three. D-backs 14th round pick in the draft three years ago on a Franklin Pierce University in New Hampshire. He's behind on Peterson, three and one. Andrew Tolls on deck, pitcher spot after that. Always got to be careful with Jock Peterson. He's homered six times in nine games this year against the Diamondbacks. And one of their five home runs last night. That one missed, and it's a one out walk. Now, Tolls will be recalled, and we'll get a look at Howie Kendrick, who come off the bench and hit from the right hand side against Hathaway. It's hitter number 47. Kendrick batting 270. He's got eight home Kendrick. runs. 0 for 2 with a couple of walks last night. Chappelle slow walk to the mound now that Kendrick has been announced. He'll go to his right-hander, Jake Barrett, on his way in. We'll take a break from Dodger Stadium, bottom of the eighth inning. And the D-backs trail at 5-2.
Summary, Diamondbacks last night had two runs on four hits, and it's the same deal tonight. This one is a 5-2 ball game. A.J. Pollock got it started. A home run in the first inning, his second of the year. Jake Lamb, an RBI sack fly in the fourth. Dodgers got three in the third. It was a short night for Shelby Miller, who gave up a career-high 11 hits and wenches four to third. Jake Barrett, the new pitcher, his 60th appearance this year, a 4-0-90 ERA. And coming off an impressive outing Saturday against the Rockies when he came on to start the eighth inning and retired the side on just nine pitches, including two strikeouts. Howie Kendrick will hit for Andrew Tolles. Peterson at first and one out. What you liked from Jake, Bob, I thought Saturday was the how aggressive he was. I mean, he came out power fastball. One, two, three, attack the hitter and just blew guys away. Yeah, completely different body language than we've seen recently from Jake. He was in command out there to be sure. And he's looked a lot better lately. Last four appearances for Jake. He's given up just one hit and has four strikeouts. But Howie Kendrick, as we know, is always a tough out. Fastballs in there, and it's one and two. Kenley Jansen, the closer, is ready in the Dodger bullpen. Diamondbacks in the ninth inning will have Pollock, Goldie, Lamb, three, four, and five. Chop foul. Howie Kendrick, he's hit safely in 20 of his last 24 games against the Diamondbacks. Double play ball here, Segura, Owings for one, and they roll it. Great job by Jake Barrett, comes in, gets the double play, and sends us to the ninth. Diamondbacks against Jansen, down three. Diamondback order will bat in the ninth inning. 
Let's take a look at our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game. A.J. Pollock in the first off Ross Dripling, his second home run this year. Haven't been many offensive highlights in this game for the Diamondbacks. Chris Owings did double leading off the fourth, later came to score on the Jake Lamb sack fly to center field, but uh, tough sledding now against the closer for the Dodgers, Kenley Jansen. That 1A2 ERA is fourth best among National League relievers. And he is second in the league, 41 saves and 47 opportunities. It'll be A.J. Pollock, Paul Goldschmidt, and Jake Lamb, 3, 4, and 5. Howie Kendrick, who hit for Andrew Tolles, will stay in the ball game. He'll take over in left field. And Yasiel Puig, who hit for Reddick, is out there in right. D-backs have been out, hit 11 of 4. They trail it 5-2 and down to their final three outs. Two and zero on AJ Pollock, looking for base runners here. That's a strike. Two and one. Fly ball, deep center field. Peterson backing up at the track, and he's got it just shy of the wall. It's a cool night here. There's absolutely no wind. The flags are very still in center field. And that one didn't quite carry far enough for AJ. Yeah, might have had some action earlier in the evening, but as you mentioned, the temperatures have cooled down considerably. Ball just doesn't seem to be carrying at all as well as it was earlier in the ball game, or for that matter, in yesterday's game when we started two hours earlier. Goldie has singled and struck out twice. Which is four for 25 on this road trip for Paul. Swings through that one and it's 0 1. Wanted that fastball up, and that was right down the middle. And that's what's been a little concerning about Paul Goldschmidt. He swung right through some really hittable pitches in the middle of the plate. Jansen just made a big mistake right there and got away with it. Big breaking ball, and he drops it right down to that corner. And Goldie strikes out for the third time tonight. You don't see that pitch often from Kenley Jansen, but when he does use it, you can see how effective it is. This kind of freezes Goldie and then drops that curveball on the outside corner at 84. Last man standing is Jake Lamb. Jake had that RBI fly ball in the fourth. 0 for 2. I'm in back live post game show with Todd Walsh is coming up immediately following our ball game. Same two teams in the series and road trip finale tomorrow night. Robbie Ray against Brock Stewart. Day off on Thursday and then a nice long homestand. Get your tickets, fans, dbacks.com. This is a good homestand. Three against the Giants, three against the Rockies, and four against these Dodgers. Two. I'm 
Diamondbacks have not won a series in this ballpark in more than three years. And they're in danger of dropping the first two games of this visit. 0-2 to Jake Lamb. Got him. And the Dodgers win the ball game 5-2. And for the second straight night, the Diamondbacks here in this ballpark can manage only two runs on four hits. Well, I wish I could say they've hit into a lot of tough luck the last couple nights, but more than anything else, it's just been this Dodger pitching staff executing their pitches a lot more consistently than the Diamondback staff has. And tonight it was Ross Stripling who looked good, settled down nicely after the Pollock homer, gave them five innings in the bullpen. Did the job from there. D backs are out, hit 11 of 4. They drop it 5 2, and they'll turn to Robbie Ray. Try and salvage the series finale tomorrow night. Diamondback Live post game presented by CenturyLink is coming up next from Los Angeles. Everybody here saluting the great Vin Scully just to our right along press row. AJ Pollock got it started his second home run, but that was pretty much all the offense tonight. And the D backs lose this one 5 2. Reaction from the clubhouse is coming up next. Diamondback Live post game right after this coming up on Fox Sports Arizona.